Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues, your daily dose of health and medical news. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and here is what I bring to you all from the world of medicine. How therapy might help in treating severe chronic headaches. Effective treatments exist for post-traumatic stress disorders but not for post-traumatic headaches which along with the traumatic brain injury scientists are still working very hard to understand. Now a new therapy is said to be the first to be developed specifically for post-traumatic headache significantly it reduces related disability in veterans following a traumatic brain injury. This innovative treatment which is called the cognitive behavioral therapy for headache was appealing to the patients showing low dropout rates and is even easy for therapists to learn and deliver increasing its potential to be broadly disseminated and to improve the lives of hundreds of thousands of service members and veterans the findings of the study are reported in the jama neurology journal Now we all know that migraine medications are very commonly used or commonly prescribed and they are used to elevate the headache pain but they do not relieve the related disability they also often have unwanted side effects and their overuse can even worsen the outcomes the researchers have made this major breakthrough by the development of cognitive behavior therapy in the treatment of post traumatic headaches Now to find the first major treatment successful for post traumatic headaches and that the treatment also significantly reduces the comorbid post traumatic stress disorder symptoms it itself is a huge step forward How genes are responsible for Parkinson's patients Scientists from different institutes have studied the records of close to 2000 Parkinson's disease patients from their first hospital visit and believe that the genetic variants may shed some light in how fast or slow the disease usually progresses in cases where only a single gene is involved now the patients who had either the two specific genes which was the LRRK2 or the PRKN gene mutations had a longer survival time than patients without any gene mutation now conversely those who had the SNCA or the GBA mutations had a shorter survival time than those without a mutation Monogenic forms of Parkinson's disease that is usually caused by a single gene variant also accounted for approximately 5% of all the cases as most appear to occur sporadically now this happens without any even family history it was hence found that a change in the LRRK2 gene is probably the most common genetic variant associated with Parkinson's disease Also people who carry this variant may develop the disease later in their life and have a 70% chance of being diagnosed by the age of 80. The researchers therefore concluded that these findings not only help increase our understanding of what drives the progression of Parkinson's disease but they may also enable the clinicians to have honest conversations with their patients about the expected survival times just as cancer patients are told their prognosis. Now this also can empower the patients to make decisions about their care and the time they may have left. How bullies affect children's mental health leading to suicide rates. Young adolescents who are targets of cyberbullying are more likely to report suicidal thoughts and attempts an association that goes above and beyond the link between suicidality and traditional offline bullying. A new study published in the JAMA Network Open reports an association. Now to better understand whether cyberbullying is unique in its association with suicidality in early adolescents, the researchers analyzed data from a diverse sample of over 10,000 children between the ages of 10 and 13. The participants filled out cyberbullying questionnaires which asked whether they had ever been a target or a perpetrator. of cyberbullying defined as purposefully trying to harm another person or be mean to them online in text or group texts or even social media while traditional offline bullying was surveyed through a separate questionnaire which broke down the behavior into three categories first was an overt aggression such as threatening or hitting second was relational aggression such as not inviting or leaving someone out or the third one which was the reputational aggression such as spreading rumors or even gossiping now of the study participants that were included 7.6% responded that they had experienced suicidal thoughts or acts 8.9% reported being targets of cyberbullying and 0.9% reported cyberbullying others 
The authors found that being a target of cyberbullying was associated with suicidality, whereas being a perpetrator of cyberbullying was not. The additionally, the researchers found that being bullied online only partly overlaps with being bullied offline, supporting the fact that nation that cyberbullying is a distinct phenomenon independent of offline experiences of bullying. This may suggest that adolescents affected by cyberbullying are different from those who have been affected by online bullying. The researchers hence concluded that these findings suggest being a target of cyberbullying is an independent risk factor for youth suicidality. A recent rise in hospitalizations in cannabis users and its adverse effects. According to a new study published in the BMJ Open Respiratory Research, visits to the emergency department and hospitalizations are 22% higher among individuals who use cannabis compared to those who did not use them. The study found that serious physical injury and respiratory reasons were the two leading causes of ED visits and hospitalizations among the cannabis users. Outcomes of nearly 4,800 individuals who reported any cannabis use in the preceding 12 months were assessed. The researchers found no significant associations between cannabis use and respiratory-related ED visits or hospitalizations or rather death. However, they did find that the overall visit to the emergency department or hospitalizations for any reason was significantly higher among those who were cannabis users. In addition to having greater odds of going to the emergency department or being hospitalized, the findings did show that one of every 25 people who use cannabis will go to the emergency department or rather be admitted to a hospital within a year of their use. Among the reasons cannabis users went to the emergency department or were hospitalized, acute trauma was the most common with 15% of the users who got medical attention receiving it for this reason and 14% receiving care for respiratory reasons. The results of the research support that healthcare professionals and government should discourage the recreational cannabis consumption in the general population. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.